Many folks dream of the day they can pay off their mortgage and own their home free and clear. My guest today did so and did it in record time and then wrote the book called Burn Your Mortgage. Please welcome Sean Cooper. You're listening to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, where we chat with real estate experts from across the province to learn what's happening in the real estate market. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, it's great to be with you, Ron. And Sean, so I'm, I'm a third of the way through your book right now. I really, really enjoy your story. For folks who aren't aware, oh, back in 2015, you really made uh, waves across the world uh, with your mortgage journey. Can you quickly tell us a little bit about your backstory? Sure. Well, thanks. Nice plug there, holding up my book. Yes, I'd be happy to rewind to 2015, the good old days before COVID or anything like that, when you could actually have parties with people. But anyhow, I was just like any other homeowner in Toronto. I wanted to purchase a home on my own. And it was tough back then to purchase a home as a single household, uh, like single income household. Of course, there's no mortgage stress test back then. So it was kind of like I was surprised how much mortgage money I qualified for rather than today people are surprised how little they qualified for but anyway like growing up my parents were a huge inspiration for me like they were always homeowners throughout the time growing up so that was a major goal for me so ever since I pretty much got my first full-time job I started saving towards the eventual purchase of a property and I wanted to buy a property at age 24 but the real estate market was just so darn competitive that it really took me until like age 27 to buy a property like it was it wasn't for a lack of trying that's that's for sure i find it finally ended up getting a property by doing a preemptive offer or like a bully offer on a property and that's how i eventually got it because yes every property i was interested in got like 10 offers or more it was pretty frustrating experience but i was so happy to finally get my property so when i got my property it was certainly a great moment but that wasn't good enough for me i I wanted to be able to just enjoy financial freedom as soon as possible and get rid of my mortgage as, as soon as possible. So yes, I pretty much continued my frugal living when I got into the property and I got the idea from a show from HGTV, Scott McGillivray's Inca property to live rather than live upstairs in my property. I decided to live in the basement of the property and rent out the upstairs of my property so that I could bring in even more rent because I was um, living on my own at that point in time. That certainly helped me and I developed some side hustles like uh, writing was a major side hustle. So I was able to take all the extra money from rent writing and put it against my mortgage. And it just kind of forewent and like uh, didn't do any major trips or anything like that. I just kind of focused 100% on getting my mortgage paid down. So by being able to do that, I was able to pay off my mortgage in a little over three years by age 30. And lo and behold, right before the big moment, CBC called me up and CBC's The National was there to fill my big mortgage birding party with all of my friends. Of course, this was pre-COVID time, so there was no six feet, feet rule or anything like that, but it was such a great moment. And then like I mentioned that I want to write a book one day and CBC is like, well, we'd love to cover it. So that's kind of how the, the book came up. And yeah, that's kind of my journey in a nutshell. Fantastic. So as you were kind of going through that process, Sean, was there ever a time, um, and, and maybe let's quickly backtrack, Sean, can you take us how much you purchased the property for? And it's pretty incredible how much money you were able to pay down in a short period of time. Can we just quickly touch on the numbers? Sure, of course. So I was able to purchase a property in Toronto, Ontario for $425,000. Now, mind you, this was August 2012. So you, you could get a decent property back then. Nowadays, you'd struggle to buy a condo for that much. But yes, I bought my property for $425,000. And then I put a, a very sizable down payment of $170,000 on on the property and that left me with a mortgage of 255,000, which I thought was a big amount, but <laughs> these days people are certainly taking on a lot bigger mortgages than that. And I was able to save that big of a down payment because like that was kind of the goal that I set myself of owning a property pretty much since the day that I started working part-time. And I just kept putting money aside. Like when, when I saw 
people my age, like having part-time jobs like me at the supermarket and other part-time jobs, they would just live paycheck to paycheck and spend all, all their money because their parents would pay for all their living expenses. But instead with me, I, that wasn't my mindset. Like I was putting away as much money as possible and saving my money. So that's how I was able to save such a big down payment just by getting in that regular habit of saving my money and having that right mindset rather than like, sadly, 50% of Canadians I've heard like live paycheck to paycheck and it's not necessarily their fault. I mean, there's a lack of financial literacy in this country. I, I guess I was just lucky that I had good parents that set good examples for me. And I was into reading financial books like The Wealthy Barber by David Chilton. So by reading those books and just having the right mindset that really helped set me up for success later in life. Sure. Now, back to the question I was going to ask. During that time, three-year period, you're working extremely hard, part-time jobs, side hustles. You're, like you said, not forgoing everything, but maybe forgoing a lot of the, the more luxurious things in your life, nicer dinner out with friends, big expensive vacations. Was there a time when you said, I, I, I don't want to do this anymore? Maybe I want to pay over five years just so I can enjoy this time a little bit. Or, or what was your mindset during that time? Well, it's, it's funny that you say that, Ron. Like, if I had have known about COVID, I probably would have paid it over five years instead and had a bit more fun and taken some more trips because we've kind of been stuck and not be able to travel the last uh, two years. But anyways, hindsight's 2020. I definitely don't regret paying off my mortgage super quickly. Um, I'm, what I'm really happy about is that I bought at that point in time because there was just so many newspaper headlines out there saying, like, the next real estate bubble is coming. Like there was just a lot of chatter in the media about that. And even my parents were like, are you sure it's a good time to buy? But I, I know people that listen to that and they just kind of sat in the, 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 the sidelines. And I look now at my property, I bought for 425 and I could sell for almost a million dollars now. So if I had to listen to the experts and continue to live with my parents or rent it instead, I wouldn't be able to afford the, the property that I'm in. So Definitely, I think like there's a great saying, it's about like time in the market rather than timing the market. So just try to tune out all of that chatter about real estate bubble. Like they've been saying that since pretty much the like early, early 2000s and it hasn't materialized uh, as of yet. Like, uh, you know, there in certain markets like in Alberta, there have been uh, the real estate market has been weak there because of the resource sector. But if you're hoping that home prices are going to drop 30% overnight and you're going to be able to buy a property at a bargain. I mean, I don't, don't think that's going to happen. So I would just say like buy a property when it makes sense for, for you from a financial and lifestyle perspective and don't necessarily listen to all the chatter out there in the media because it, at the end of the day, it's you're the one you're the one that's buying the property or just not one of those so-called experts speculating about what's going to happen. Sean, can we speak about the mindset and maybe even talking about COVID the the ability to know that you own your own home and that should anything change in your life you have your mortgage paid off can you talk about how uh that mindset maybe helps a person during any type of life and like you you went through a few situations there of housing bubble uh the amount of money that you've now accumulated in your property just by owning it talk about owning your home free and clear and how that helps a person Yes, it's a great point. It's definitely a great feeling, especially during these times of, of tough times of COVID. Like I'm sure a lot of Canadians are stressed out if they've been laid off from their job and they have huge mortgage payments to make. Like imagine you take on a mortgage of eight, nine hundred thousand dollars. Like think about how high those mortgage payments would be. Like even with the low interest rates today, you're spending like three, four thousand dollars a month on mortgage payments. And imagine if you lose your like full-time job. I mean, it's not easy to come up with those kind of payments anymore, especially if you're in one of those harder hit uh, industries, like the travel industry or hospitality or industry or whatnot. So yes, definitely. Uh, uh, like I did it for to be able to achieve financial freedom, to be able to enjoy the nicer things in life, like to be able to travel and, and, and be able to go out to hockey games and not have to worry about money. But I also did it from a risk management perspective as well, because like growing up, I saw like my parents struggle when they lost their 
jobs like during the financial crisis and dot-com bubble and all that and just the stress that it was caused in our household I just didn't want to have to go through that myself like being a single income household so it was definitely for it was definitely for kind of like a uh, peace of mind thing because yeah like money is definitely a big cause of stress with a lot of Canadians it can even destroy relationships as well so I just wanted to have like that big weight of the world lifted off my shoulders because it was definitely a lot of pressure like I, I certainly try to do my best at all, all the places that I work but I mean it's, it's added pressure when you own a property you don't want to mess up anything at your job because if you mess up something you could lose your job and then how are you supposed to make the mortgage payments so yeah I just wanted to have that stress taken away and, and be able to in, enjoy life and not having to worry about making those big mortgage payments so yes definitely like it, it's 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 like, like some people argue that it would have made more sense for me to take a more balanced approach and invest at the same time as pay my mortgage payments. But I kind of look at it this way, like you can choose to invest and it's certainly good to invest your money. But the thing is, you have to make your mortgage payments no matter what. Like you can't just choose to not make them because it doesn't work with your cash flow situation. So, yeah, I've basically taken the money that I was putting towards my mortgage the last, like since 2015, I've been taking all that money and investing it. So, I've, like, definitely built a pretty good investment portfolio uh, since doing that. And it helps, like, get me in the right mindset to regularly put money aside instead of living paycheck to paycheck. So, I would just say, from the standpoint of just not having that stress of, of, of potentially losing your job and having to make the mortgage payments, I mean, it was well worth it uh some people can argue that i would have been better off investing but uh like a, i definitely sleep well at night having a paid off home that's for sure so i de definitely think you can't really put a price on that playing the devil's advocate now we're in a, a time of extremely low interest rates does your advice change for people who are looking to get into the market right now because we do have these low interest rates and potentially you could be making more money in the stock market if you were to say put as little money down on a property and invest it what, what what would your advice sean be or does it always come back to peace of mind i guess it really depends on the situation of the individual but i definitely think peace of mind is important because yeah it could i mean if you have a huge mortgage and like a eight nine hundred thousand it's going to be around with you for the coming years like 20 25 years yeah it could definitely cause a bit of uh stress in terms of that so what what i would say is it really depends on the individual situation but if i if i could go back again and, and redo everything i mean i wouldn't i don't really regret paying it off in three years i might like if i had have heard of, of this uh i probably would have done it the smith maneuver where basically you can have your financial cake and eat it too you can pay your mortgage faster and invest at the same time so if and it doesn't require any extra cash flows so if i had heard of the smith maneuver back then i probably would have done the smith maneuver and then i could have built an investment portfolio at the same time uh, and then i wouldn't like some people are right now are saying well there's no point in paying down my mortgage because rates are so low and I definitely get their point with that but by doing the Smith maneuver you could kind of you pay down your mortgage and build a sizable investment portfolio so yeah if I could the only maybe tweak I would do is do the Smith maneuver instead of just like pay my regular mortgage but beyond that definitely don't have any regrets and I think that it can make sense for people depending on their situation but uh but yeah like interest rates aren't going to be low like this forever so if you have a pretty big mortgage we we'll, might as well pay it down while rates are low because if you look at your amortization table like so much of your money goes towards principal versus interest right now but when rates go higher that won't be the case like a lot more of your money will go towards interest so i definitely see it as a unique opportunity to pay down your mortgage super quick if you want to do it but yeah I'd probably do this myth if i could do it over again just for folks who've never heard of it, um, Sean, can you quickly, in a, in a brief amount of time, explain what the Smith Maneuver is in just kind of a quick nutshell for people? Sure. So the Smith Maneuver, you have to have a specific type of mortgage. So it's called a readvanceable mortgage. And in order to have a readvanceable mortgage, you need to have at least 20% equity in your property. So if you don't have at least like a 20% down payment, then that's not an option at the beginning, but you could set it up later on. So basically what a readvanceable mortgage is, it's a mortgage and 
home equity line of credit. And as you pay down the mortgage, it opens up more space on the home equity line of credit based on the amount of principal that's paid down from each payment. So let's say you make a $2,000 mortgage payment and $800 goes towards interest and $1,200 goes towards principal. Well, then the $1,200 from principal would open up the home equity line of credit space. And then basically you take that extra space and you withdraw the money into a checking account and then you contribute it into like a non-registered account. Like uh, there's there's specific criteria in terms of the investments that uh, it ensure that the interest is tax deductible. Like I definitely reach out to an expert that knows what the Smith maneuver is, but basically by taking the money, it, it's, it's, the, it's the use of the money that is, is the important part. So by taking that money and investing it in the right type of investment, like an unregistered account rather than a TFSA or RSP, you're able to claim the mortgage interest as tax deductible and save yourself even more money. And it doesn't require any extra cash flow in order to do that. And by doing the Smith Maneuver, not only can you create a sizable investment portfolio, you can pay down your mortgage sooner and save yourself like hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in mortgage interest as well. So like I didn't have that type of mortgage because I didn't know about the Smith Maneuver, but certainly if I was to do it all over again, I would certainly do the Smith Maneuver myself because I'm kind of somebody that like, once I start something, I finish it off. I'm, I'm not somebody that like, jumps from one thing to the next. So I definitely think for somebody who's financially disciplined, this myth maneuver can make a lot of sense. And yeah, definitely connect with somebody who like a, a mortgage professional who understands what the Smith maneuver is because it, yes, it could be a very powerful way to kill two birds with one stone, uh, build an investment portfolio and pay down your mortgage at the same time. Because I don't know about you, Ron, but it's hard to come up with like, my only have so much cash flow. I mean, certainly it helps that I don't have a mortgage, but the average Canadian only has so much cash flow, especially if they have childcare costs and other things. So it's a good way to pay down your mortgage and create a sizable investment portfolio, especially if you don't have a gold plated pension plan at work. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense for you. That's kind of the Smith maneuver in a nutshell. Not being a father yet. I'm always blown away when someone talks about how much their, their childcare costs are. I'm like, Kids are really, really expensive. And, and so, okay, so we were talking about um, the Smith Maneuver. And so, Sean, you are a mortgage broker now. And so uh, a client comes to you and they say, I want to do what you did, or I would like your advice to someone who is fairly financially adept on my path to financial freedom. What would your advice uh, be to them today? Sure. So I just wanted to clarify, are you asking for ways to pay down your mortgage sooner or just wanted yes. to clarify your question there? Um, I guess I okay, left it so, open-ended. Yeah. Uh, so, I, well, let's say uh, to, to pay off the mortgage faster. Sure. Sounds good. So there are a number of ways to do it. You don't necessarily need to eat craft dinner at every meal. I probably, I, I definitely wouldn't amend it for the vast majority of Canadians, but yeah, there are a number of, of simple ways that you can pay down your mortgage sooner. Like I have, I have like pretty much 10 simple ways in my book that I go through, but uh, I, I want the, uh, I want the viewers to pick up my book. So I'm not going to give away all the secrets, but I'll, I'll let you in on a few secrets in, in, in this uh, video call here. So the first way I would say is rather than paying monthly, you, uh, it's, it's helpful to pay on an accelerated basis. So either accelerated bi-weekly or accelerated weekly. And when you pay on an accelerated basis, Basically, because of the way that the mortgage payment is calculated, you're paying like a slightly higher mortgage payment. It's, it, it's not a huge amount, but because of that slightly higher mortgage payment, more of your money is going towards principal and less is going towards interest. Essentially, you're paying the equivalent of 13 months worth of mortgage payments instead of 12 months. But of course, you're only paying it over 12 months because there's no such thing as 13 months. But because of that, the higher payments that you're paying, you're able to pay off your mortgage that much sooner. So that's one simple way to pay it down. Another one I like is using found money to make like lump sum payments on your mortgage. And examples of found money are like, for example, we're around, we're just in the middle of tax season. So using your tax refund to make a lump sum payment on your mortgage. Uh, as an exa another example, like inheritance, you could take some of that money, put it against your mortgage bonus bonus at work, you can put it against the mortgage. The good thing about lump sum payments is that whereas a regular payment goes towards like a split of 
interest and in, in principal, a lump sum payment goes 100% towards principal. So like essentially, if your mortgage balance is $400,000 and you make a $2,000 lump sum payment, it goes down to 398. Like it's as simple as that. So that's why the lump sum payments are so powerful there. And I'd also say like, just my third tip is just set yourself a goal in terms of when you want to have your mortgage paid off and kind of reverse engineer it and work it back way words. Like I set myself, uh, like I had a mortgage free date in mind and like I pictured my mortgage burning party. Like I didn't think that CBC was going to be there. That just kind of happened. But by setting that goal of when I wanted to pay off my mortgage, I like worked backwards and figured out how much extra money I would need to put against the mortgage. And yeah, that really motivated me. And just having that right mindset, like I pictured, I literally planned out the trips I would take once I had my mortgage paid off and even started watching some traveling videos and just getting excited about these trips. Like luckily I didn't have a relapse and give up on my goal and just decided to travel then. But just by having like, just like, for example, Canadians struggle with saving for retirement because it's such an abstract concept, just like paying off your mortgage. I mean, that can be like decades away for some people, but by actually like visualizing it and, and setting plans for yourself of what you'll do and how great it will be once it's paid off, it really helps that get you in the right mindset and for you to be excited and motivated to work towards that goal. So certainly, you know, the first two examples were like examples of actual number numbers, things like accelerated payments and lump sum payments, but the right mindset, I would say is even more important than that, because you can, you can like, you can know, you can have all the, uh, you can know all the things that you need to do, but unless you actually put it into action, then nothing's going to happen and you're not going to pay down your mortgage sooner. So the, the, having the right mindset is so powerful and, and definitely that's not something to be overlooked. So by having that right mindset and setting goals for yourself of when you'd actually like to have your mortgage paid off and posting, posting the date somewhere to keep yourself accountable, even putting it on your fridge or bathroom mirror, what, whatever you want to do. I, I, I don't know, whatever motivates you by, by kind of keeping that goal in mind that can really uh, set you up for mortgage freedom later on. Really great advice. And that's what I'm really hearing in the, in the early part of your book is how to get your mindset in the right way to, to be able to achieve some of these goals. So uh, Sean, we're, we're just about at the end here. Tell us where people can pick up your book and where they can get a little more information on you. Sure. Well, thanks so much for having me on your show, Ron. It's been a pleasure. So people can get in touch with me. They can visit my website, www burnyourmortgage.ca, just like the name of the book, burnyourmortgage.ca, and they can reach out to me. There's a, thanks for holding it up there. There's a contact form there where you can reach out to me directly if you're looking for a mortgage here in Ontario. But uh, yeah, you can check out my book there and there's a link to pick it up on Amazon where you can pick up the physical book if you're old school like me, or you can pick up the ebook or the audio book. So it's available in different formats. I would say that the ebook or the physical book are best because I've heard, I would probably say the physical book is best because like a lot of people enjoy like highlighting stuff and it's kind of a good reference book once you read it to go back and remind yourself about certain things. So I definitely recommend like, even if you're not into old school books, I'd recommend picking up the physical book just because it, has so many good reference points that you can go back to it. So yeah, thanks again for having me on the show. I really appreciate it, Ron. No worries at all. And just lastly, before I let you go, we're going to ask for some advice to a young Sean Cooper. So if you could go back, and, and whether that be at the beginning of your mortgage career or when you began this uh, this journey to to burn your mortgage or, or or before, what would you what advice would you give to a to a young Sean? Sure, I. <laughs> I'd say try to enjoy myself a bit more in my 20s because like I said, if I I still could have enjoyed financial freedom if I had to pay off my mortgage in five or six years. If I had have known about COVID kind of stealing two years from my life, I definitely would have traveled a lot more. But oh well, I have a paid off house and once COVID is over, which will hopefully be in a few months, then I can get back to having an amazing life. So yeah, I would probably say take a more balanced approach. That doesn't mean like giving up the, the plans of paying off a mortgage sooner. Like I think I could have just done it in five or six years and had a bit more fun along the way, but yeah, I don't regret anything. I'm happy to have a 
paid off house and looking forward to having a lot of fun again once uh, things are back to normal. Thank you very much for coming on today, Sean. Really appreciate you, you taking the time and sharing a bit of your knowledge. It was a pleasure to have you here. Well, thanks again, Ron. It was great to speak with you today. Thanks again to Sean Cooper for joining me on the program today. If you are looking for more information on how to pay down your mortgage, pick up Sean's book, Burn Your Mortgage. As always, if you found this episode informative and entertaining, hit the like and subscribe button. Bye for now. This has been the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you like this episode, find more information and episodes on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you'd like to be a guest or have a conversation you'd like to learn more about, let us know by messaging the show on Facebook. Thanks for listening.